Hey everybody! Um, today we're going to be talking about our hectone and tearing auger plate that we're going to be using in our lab. So the hectone and tearing auger plate is a selective and differential medium generally used to isolate gram-negative enteric bacteria, specifically things like Salmonella and Shigella, from more complex or mixed uh, samples. So our media has actually two pH indicators in it. It has acid friction and bromothymol blue. And together, these guys at around pH 7 or a neutral pH will have kind of this bluish green color to them, like our uninoculated, uninoculated plate here. And if we increase the pH or we make it more alkaline, the plate will normally turn more and more blue Whereas if we make it more acidic or decrease the pH, then it starts becoming more and more yellow, just kind of varying shades as we move up or down in our pH scale there. Now with our pH indicator out of the way, let's go ahead and move into some of the media basics for our, our plate here. So our plate, in terms of the selective component, it does have bile salts in it. And normally bile salts are really good at killing off the gram positive bacteria. So in that case here, again, we're generally selecting for gram negatives by just using bile salts to kill off the gram positives. In terms of the differential component, one part of it is fermentation. And we actually have three types of carbohydrates in our plate. We have lactose, sucrose, and salicin. And basically, if an organism can ferment any one of those three carbohydrates, it's going to create acidic byproducts, and those acidic byproducts will lower the pH of the media, eventually turning it kind of yellow. Now, a side note on that, though, is that some bacteria will actually interact with our dyes ever so slightly differently, and they will give you more of a salmon color or like almost like a purple color instead. So just kind of keep that in mind. Another part of our plate, another differential component that we have is to test for hydrogen sulfide production. So our plates also have uh, ferric ammonium citrate and sodium thiosulfate in it. And basically, if a bacterium is able to produce hydrogen sulfide, it will combine either with the ferric ammonium citrate or the uh, sodium thiosulfate, and it will create black precipitates. So with our media basics out of the way, let's talk about our results. And again, after we've uh, inoculated them, incubated them, and we're ready to score them, you know, what are these different things that we can see? So since we have both fermentation and hydrogen sulfide production results, we can end up getting uh, varying combinations of colors. So let's just kind of run through what some of those would look like. So if we start out with this guy right here, and we're kind of looking up on this section right there, what we're seeing here is just all kind of greenish blue colonies. And if you see only greenish blue colonies, no black dots, that would be a negative fermentation, negative hydrogen sulfide production. Um, if you see something like this, if we're looking at kind of these guys up here, here we have kind of our greenish blue colonies and we have really, really uh, dark dots inside of them or black dots inside of them. This would be a negative result for fermentation but a positive result for hydrogen sulfide production. Now I'm gonna go ahead and grab this plate right here and again, and this is, to sh this is just to show the two colors that you can have for fermentation. So again, it can be really, really uh, yellow, or it can be kind of this salmon uh, purple color almost. So what we can end up here is that if you have kind of like on this plate here, all yellow or all salmon with no black dots, that would be positive fermentation, but negative hydrogen sulfide production. Whereas with this guy right here, again, we have kind of our salmon color. Again, it could also be yellow, but we also have some of these black dots kind of around here. So this one would be positive for fermentation and positive for hydrogen sulfide production. Now, in terms of inoculating our plates, um, we can do a basic broth to plate inoculation. That's what we normally do. But if you have your sample on a plate or a slant, you can also do a plate to plate or a slant to plate inoculation. Um, either one will work just fine. But that should cover everything that we need to know for our HE plate.